Hello and welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're finally taking a look at the review of the V0 2.1. But first of all, roll those credits. Okay, so I'm not going to lie to you guys and dolls, this has taken longer than we expected. So, most of you have probably followed our little mini-series we did on building the V0. We did it in about, I think about nine hours in the end. Um, some very fiddly parts that we managed to mess up. So we managed to, um, we managed to... Uh, have a couple of the carriages drop off of the rails. We lost some ball bearings along the way. Uh, we had some issues with fans. We've had all sorts of problems. Um, but it's done and it works. So why did the video take so long? I don't think I have ever been so consistently mugged off by a machine where it's, you think that it's working. It's tricked you. And then you're back and you go, ah, no, it's not. Fair enough. So one of the issues I was having was, and again, so much of this has nothing to do with the machine. It has to do with me, the way that I assembled it or the parts that we printed. So one of the issues that we had was, um, was the, the uh, right hand part calling fan just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't spin. So, um, so no matter what we did, no matter how we played about with it, ordered new fans, changed the fans over, they worked outside, you put them in, and then once you pushed everything together, it obviously crushed a cable somewhere and stopped working. They now work. I had to file out some of the, um, some of the print that we had done. There was part of it that was literally crushing the cable and causing it not to work. Um, they're quite small fans in this. They're 3010 fans, little little jobbies. Um, everything in it's small. It's a small printer. It's a 120 by 120 by 120 build volume, which is very small for us. Um, I'd, I'd be lying if I said we didn't genuinely struggle to find things that we're actually going to use this machine for. And that's such a shame because this thing is a space rocket. This is, so the only other small form factor machine that's any good is the Prussian Mini, right? Which I'd be lying if I ever saw a market for when it came out. The machine works, don't get me wrong. We had a, uh, we had a clone, our clone didn't work, but, um, but even our clone <laughs> was, was an all right machine. Um, the, uh, when, when it came to doing the, um, when, it, when it came to sort of what that machine was going to be for, I really struggled to understand. I feel like I have the same reservations about this. 120 by 120 by 120. It's a very specific and niche person that is looking for a very specific machine where they are incredibly limited on space, but they don't want to be limited on features. Now, this particular one is from Blue Rolls. Um, they sent us this machine. I want to be clear. The, the opinions and everything that we express on this show are our own. We were not paid to do a review. We have simply sent the machine and asked to do one. Um, I, I love this. I wish I had more of a use for it. Because if I'm willfully honest, I don't. You guys have seen the size of the things that we normally print on this channel. Mike's got a giant Chevrolet that he's doing. Um, I've just done a, I've done a large Wolverine. I did the pirate ship recently. There's so many things that we print that are so. I mean, so I mean, uh, just as an example, like we did an X-wing fighter from Gambody that's this big. You know, there's almost nothing on this that I could have printed on the Voron. And it's such a shame because I'll show you in a second. I'll show you the quality of the prints 
that this is turning out. And I'm going to be honest, I really, really like it. So everything on here is pretty much stock. And what I mean by that is, is it is the, it is the tool head that, um, that Voron have released. There are a couple of other tool heads that, in my opinion, are slightly better than this. But the specs on mine are, um, th there's an SKR 1.4 in here. It's an LDO motor on the hot end. It's a Dragon hot end that's in here. Um, it's got a removable spring steel build plate that has two sides. A that has two sides, a, a smooth side and a textured side. We've used both. I personally prefer the textured side. I find the textured side doesn't need any adhesive at all. The smooth side, I put a little bit of hairspray on and you're away. Um, so this doesn't have auto bed leveling. The bed is so small, you just don't need it. Like it's not necessary. Um, it, you can get mo a lot of modifications for this. So, um, so you can get the clicky probe, which, it, which sacrifices, I think, about 15 millimeters on the Z, which is a lot for such a small machine, but it basically docks a probe on the right-hand side, and then you're able to pick up the probe, probe the bed, put it back. When you're printing at high speed, your bed has to be level. One of the best machines that did this originally um, was the Railcore 2. It was when Core XYs were still sort of a, a new thing in the, uh, in, the, in the consumer game. And it went along and did a, a, a large bed mesh, a mesh bed level and, uh, and it could crank out some insane speeds. Nothing like a Voron, but it could crank out some insane speeds for the time. And the reason it could do that was because of how good its bed leveling was. Um, it's one of the main reasons why Prusas uh, are so consistent. Their bed levelling technique is actually just really good. It's really consistent, it's really efficient, and it produces a fantastic result. So let's take a little look at some of the things we have printed with the V0. Okay, so let's start with the obligatory calibration cube. So let me be clear about some of the settings we were using for this. This calibration cube was done at 180 millimeters a second with 6K accelerations, and it was done on the flat side of the build plate. And we hadn't, at this point, spent a huge amount of time calibrating the machine. It was pretty much the stock profile that was on Cura and pretty much the stock settings that came in Clipper, other than a few sort of things of us cranking up the speeds. So a very impressive cube. If we can get that into focus. Come on, there we go. A very impressive cube. Not perfect, but very impressive. This is the print test. So you can see quite a nice finish on the front, a wonderful clean finish on the surface there. Little bit of stringing, not amazing on the overhangs, if I'm honest. We're stopping at about 50 degrees on here and about 45 on the steeper one, um, but the bridging is fantastic. I think the reason for that is we were having all those issues with that fan, so we didn't have consistent part cooling from both sides, which is the part cooling from one side. This was a little vase that we did. Textured build surface on that one. Really like the textured build surface. And that came out beautifully. Lovely and concentric, no extrusion problems. Beautiful surface finish. Lovely inside, completely watertight as well, very good. This was pretty much maxing out the build volume. So this is one of the Fab 365 um, things you can print. Uh, most of this all then folds back up, which is why it looks huge at the moment. But this actually sort of sits upright, so, so that's how it, um, it manages to, to all go together. But the finish on this, really, really good. And again, this printed at 150 millimeters a second. 
um, uh, at I think about 2,000 or 3,000 acceleration. Um, really, really impressed with the speed that this was able to turn this out not just the quality. The quality is there. Like by any stretch of the imagination, that's good quality. It's done all the detail and everything, no stringing, nothing like that. Good extrusion. Did a really, really good job there. I was really impressed with how all of those came out. So, final thoughts. Should you buy one? Oh, God. Yes, no, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. So this is a great machine. If you are stuck on space, but you need something that can print ABS and you don't need big build volumes, you are not gonna be able to buy better than this. This is about 350 pound from Blue Rolls before you ship to whatever your country is. Um, should you be buying the Blue Rolls kit over something like the LDO? So, the LDO kit is about the best kit that you can buy. But, and there is a but, there is a law of diminishing returns. This is an expensive machine, it's two end of threes and a third of the build volume of one. So it's, it's a great machine. It's small, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Even the spool fits directly on the back. So pretty much this is the build volume that you, or this is the volume you're gonna to need to store. It's very portable. Clipper's actually very easy to use. Mainsail is very good to use. It's all very simple. There's no, there is a screen that comes with this. We didn't fit it, we just didn't see the need. Um, the screen is very, very small. Um, I don't know if I've, here we, no. Uh, here we go, here we go. This is the screen, <laughs> which, I mean, it is teeny tiny. There's no point. It gives you temperature readouts and that's it. So we didn't bother with that. Um, so we just left ours blank because you use Clipper anyway. So, um, so, yeah. If you have a use for it, there isn't a better machine, a small format machine that you can buy today that will meet those needs, that will meet those requirements that you have. Should you buy it? I just don't know if I can answer that question for you. If what you need is a small machine that you can throw pretty much anything at that's highly modifiable, so there's two or three really good tool heads that you can put on this. Um, there's a modification of the stealth, you can do the clicky probe, you can do all sorts of stuff. It's a fantastic platform. It's, it's, it's a compact, well put together, well thought out machine. Should you buy it? If you want to. And I don't know that I can give a better answer than that. This isn't a machine that I would recommend to anybody. It's not a machine I would recommend to a beginner because the build is quite intense and it does require you to, to sort of, to understand some pretty basic principles. The price is good, but you can get other machines for that money. At, at 360, you're stepping on the toes of going out and buying a Sidewinder. Or you're stepping on the toes of, you know, uh, of CR10s and things like that. Things that are over, you know, five times the volume. Should you buy one? If you've got a need, and it's this sized need, you should absolutely get it. You can't buy anything better today that will perform at this size. The problem with this form factor is that because it has limited appeal, because there aren't that many people printing at this print volume, um, the most of the machines in this space don't have don't have heated build plates, they aren't enclosed, you can't print ABS. Um, you know, the beds don't go up very high if they heat at all. The build, the build quality is poor because it's small. It's seen more as a, as a hobbyist, crafty person thing that, you know, they just want to print key rings or something like that. 
This is not that machine. This is a this is a shrunk down engineering grade machine. This is fantastic. You can do anything you want to with this. You could put a heated build chamber on this if you wanted to. You could put a high flow dragon hot end on here and throw a, a high capacity um, sort of volcano nozzle on it or something. And you could be printing PC, peak, you know, whatever you wanted to on this. It's a tool for a job. It's not a job that I do. I, I don't do, you know, rapid prototyping or things like that. I make models. And this channel just isn't really in that space. But if it was, I know exactly the machine that I would buy. This invokes an emotional response from me. It is what I want from a printer. It is reliable. It's modifiable. You build it yourself. Um, it's, it's hugely modular where you can, you know, you can change component parts to it and you can build it for the specific application that you have. Problem is, is I don't have an application for it. And that bothers me because I want to use it. I've spent so long with it, fiddling and tinkering and nurturing it and telling it how it should behave. It feels like a child. You know, I've spent so long telling it how what it should be doing. I'm almost afraid to let it go in case it misbehaves and it's my fault. I do really love it. And I think that that matters. It's not the machine that I need. But it's exactly the machine that I want. And I think that that's important. With that said, keep an eye on the channel, guys. We've got lots of new content coming. We have managed this year to hit 4,500 subscribers. We've done that because of you because of you guys who are sharing our videos, watching our content, new you know, referring over new, um, new suppliers to us so that we can get new machines in and do new stuff. And, you know, and we are, we are growing. You'll be happy to know that we seem to have fixed, at least for the meantime, our audio issue, and we've got new professional microphones coming so that it doesn't sound like I'm shouting into a tin can um, all the time or one of the ears just randomly stops working. Um, we've got a lot of content coming, guys. We've got loads planned for next year. We've got some huge things coming up with Photocentric, so keep an eye out for some of the Instagram and TikTok posts that are going to come with that. And keep an eye out for the End of Three Belt video, which will be coming soon, because that is awesome! Thanks very much for joining us, guys. Stay safe. See you on the next video.